Hello, I'm John Stouffer, an indie game hobbyist, and I thought it'd be fun to catalog some of the lessons I learned in creating my latest title. So let's start today with a very simple lesson on something that you'll find in games all the time, which is the simple button and door. You can press the button and you open the door. You step off the button and the door turns back on. So let's look at what's going on here. Okay, so for this basic situation, the pieces you're going to want to have is, of course, you're going to want to have your door. Uh, I have this force field I've created, and it's going to have a script on it called door counter. And then we can go over here and look at the button itself, and we'll find it's going to have several important pieces. It's going to have a button base with a script called door button. It's going to have a button plate, which is going to have a force added to it, as well as a button sensor script and then we're going to have this break which is just an empty box and its relevance will come in soon enough so i guess first i should address there is a very simple way to deal with this situation which isn't really even worth like showing the code because it's so simplistic but in some cases you would be able to do this and that is to simply have um you got your you know your bo door here um there it is and then you have your button here and you just have like a trigger here that basically says when on trigger enter, remove the force field on trigger exit, set the force field back. Uh, the situations where you're going to run into a problem though is maybe more complex games where for example maybe the player is capable of moving a bunch of different objects around the area like let's say but, uh, boxes, right? If the player were to choose to place two boxes on the button and then if one of the boxes was removed even though there was still a box on the button the moment that box was removed it would trigger the on trigger exit and the force field would be reactivated even though technically the button was still compressed so if you're dealing with situations where you either have multiple objects in a scene that can compress the button or you have maybe multiple players in a scene you're going to want something a little more robust than the simple on trigger enter on trigger exit type of situation so that's more what this is for um, but let's go ahead and talk about these scripts and then we'll take a look at the actual, how they fit in with the rest of the components so we're going to start off with our door counter not much going on here we have our public int buttons public int count so we can see if we look at our force field here buttons count so this is just how many buttons is this door looking for and how many is it finding compressed so if buttons is up to let's say three you can set it up to 35 so for now we're just going to keep it at one button count of one right um all right so next let's look at our button plate uh this is going to be the one that has the add for script as well as the button sensor so now this is something i want to talk real briefly about in general, I find when I'm developing games, it's usually good if you can create a script that's a bit more robust, that then can have multiple uses throughout your game, it can certainly save you a lot of time. So in the case of this with the buttons, technically the only thing I needed this script to do was give a constant subtle upward force to the button to keep it elevated, kind of like a spring, right? Pushing your button back up into the up position. That's all I really needed, but I wasn't going to make a special script just for that. So what you're going to see is a whole bunch of stuff in here for my ad force. It has like speed, it has the three axes, it has a Boolean, which determines whether or not it adds the force a single time or repeatedly every frame. And then of course it gets the rigid body component. A lot of that isn't necessary. Technically, all you really need here is you need the speed, the rigid body component, and then this part of the start function and then nothing in the update except for this single line technically that's all you really need but of course what i wanted to do was i wanted to create a script that i could have multiple uses of four throughout my games but here you can see how it's set up here i only have a subtle force of 25 and it's only on the y direction and it is repeating that's kind of how I handled that. Let's go ahead and look at our button sensor script. Some artifacts of old code in here, but we'll just ignore that. So we have 
our add force so it's getting the add force script once again and of course on the start function it's saying okay get that component and then let's kind of talk through this backwards uh, where we have our standard on trigger enter and our on trigger exit but we also have this on trigger stay which we'll get into so on trigger enter all we're doing is we're setting the uh, rigid body velocity to vector three zero and of course it's looking for specific tags like tag player tag enemy tag shadow whatever your game needs so we're tagging our things and we're saying if something enters and it has the proper tag that says oh this is the type of thing that can compress buttons in our game then get the rigid body component set vector three to zero and the reason you want to set it to zero initially is simply because when every frame it has this small subtle upward force on the button to help it fight against gravity then sometimes you can have a weird delayed reaction right those forces will build up and you'll jump on the button and it'll take half a second for the button to seemingly react and compress itself so we don't want that we want an immediate reaction um all right then on trigger stay we have here we see similar things once again um if your th game object has the right t trigger tags um then go ahead and we're going to set the speed to the reverse. So normally the speed is set to 25, but we're saying on trigger stay, if something is on the button that's relevant, set the speed to not 25, but negative 25. So now the button, instead of having an upward force, has a downward force. It's being pressed into the plate. And then finally we have our on trigger exit script here, which is basically saying, kind of like the simplistic version of a button I was saying before, which is, okay, any time the trigger exits, you know, whenever something of relevance, whether it's a player or a box or whatever, leaves the button, then set your rigid body component back to vector 3.0 and set your add force speed back to a positive 25. So give it that positive upward force. And the reason why this, of course, works is that you can have like 20 players piled on top of that button and they'll certainly start leaving, but that will only reset the button back to a positive force for a single frame. And immediately on the next frame, it's going to set the force back down to a negative 25. If you add a force for a single frame in the upward direction on something compressed against another object, and then immediately the next frame, the force sends it back down, it's not going to actually move far enough for the game to register the button as being decompressed. So seemingly the button will always be compressed. So let's talk about, finally, I believe it's under door buttons, yes, uh, our last script. So door buttons, uh, just to show it again, uh, we have, that is our script right here on our button plate, our button base, yeah, right here. It says door buttons. So let's look at that script really quick, see what's going on here. Um, first thing it wants to do is it wants to find the, go the game object, the door, the force field, and get the door counter script off of it. If we recall, the door counter script was just this simple script with a couple small integers. And then it's simply saying, okay, on collision enter, if the collider happens to have the name button plate, so button plate reminder is this red thing right here. This is your button plate. And it's just saying, okay, if something collides with me and it's the button plate, then I know someone, something's compressing that button plate. And therefore I'm going to set my door count to a plus plus. I'm going to add one to the door count. And we don't need to check the door every frame because that would be wasteful. We only need to check the door every time the door count changes. So when the door count changes, go ahead and check to see if door count is greater than or equal to the required number of door buttons. And then if it is, set door uh, door dot set active false, right? Uh, and then on collision exit, so if we sense the button plate has left, then door count minus minus, and then check to see if door count is now less than door buttons, and if it is, door set active true. So the result of that, once again, is that every time one of the buttons in your scene changes, only then is the door being tested, and the door can deactivate. So uh, one final thing I guess we'll show off, of course, with the setup, as I said, you can have multiple buttons on a single door. So if we set, let's set, I actually kind of preset it up this way. Let's go ahead and we have a second button here. 
So let's throw a box on that button and we will see that before it required two, I mean it required one, but we just set buttons to two on the door. So if we start our scene up, la la la. All right, you can see the door is still active even though we have a button being compressed over here. But if we compress the second button here, boom, the door deactivates and we can walk through. Assume I just realized I forgot to mention one thing in that video, so I'm just going to shove it here at the end. Uh, I didn't talk about this break. Uh, the break is important simply because you constantly have this upward force, sort of like a spring right on your button plate. So one important component to making this button work is obviously the button base will keep the button from falling through the floor, especially if you set the mesh glare to convex. If you're having trouble, that's probably why. Um, uh, but you also want to have a break above your button to keep it from flying into the stratosphere when it's not compressed. Uh, and the way you, I did that was simply I created a layer that only collides with default. So you'll see here it says only default, and then it simply has a box collider. So the player can pass through it, the boxes can pass through it, but the button cannot. And of course the way you deal with that is you can go under your project settings and under physics, and you can check all these things in your layer collision mat matrix, and that'll say what collides with what. Yes, the button plates layer is default. So the brake can only com collide with uh, the actual plate itself. Um, the other thing I thought would probably be worth mentioning is, uh, obviously in this case, uh, we're dealing with a force field door. Uh, but a lot of players are probably going to want to know, well, what if I have a sliding door? What if I'm doing a Star Trek style door? How, how then, you know, good sir. So I'm not going to try and write this code out perfectly. It's probably going to have typos and all kinds of weird crap. But essentially what you would have is, so in the door button script, we see again that we have our, oh, you know, set door to active, set it to false. Well, obviously that wouldn't be sufficient. So instead of setting the door to active, you would probably go ahead and, and do something like this where you would have, um, you know, your public bool open, and that would be what your door buttons are changing. Instead of set active, you'd be changing this open boolean, and you'd have like two positions, right? Your um, transform for your open position, and your transform for your closed position for your door. And then you simply keep a update function running, which says something along the lines of, if open is true, then move your position toward um, target position at some step interval. And then if it's closed, do the same thing in reverse, send, move it toward the closed position here. I honestly, I haven't tested this. I'm not sure if it would work perfectly, but it seems like it probably should. So if you want your kind of Star trek -y type of door where it just slides open, slides closed, you would do something along these lines.